This is War of the Worlds. Oh, yes. yes. The old H.G. Wells broadcast. Or Orson Welles, sorry, broadcast. Orson Welles. H.G. Wells was the writer yes. of the book. So yeah, the War of the Worlds broadcast. Broadcast in 1938 on October 31st. It was a Halloween broadcast. And it uh, was um, uh, aired on the Mercury Theater on the Air. It was an old radio drama anthology series. And it directed and narrated by actor and feature filmmaker Orson Welles. Um, became famous for allegedly causing a mass panic. Mm-hmm. Although uh, apparently the reality of this mass panic has been disputed by some people because uh, a lot of people say that the program had relatively few listeners. But at the same time, I mean, you know, it could have very few listeners, but the panic could have spread by word of mouth. Quite oh, exactly. yeah, like people would be phoning up their friends like, Mabel? Yeah. And especially yeah. Mabel, did you hear about this? Exactly, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And the, so like 1938 was like, World War Two. Yeah. Yeah. So like everyone was already terrified that they were under attack by, you know, the Germans or something yeah. like that. And Different America kind of was, aliens. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. America was already very on edge and stuff because they didn't really want to get into the whole war at all. Yeah. And they got, felt like they had to get sucked into it, all this kind of <laughs> stuff. Um so anyway, yeah, the War of the Worlds broadcast, it announced several times that it was fake broadcast like it was just like a radio play there was another broadcast at the time and it was like a an, like a performance like a uh, theater thing mm-hmm. whenever they'd go into a musical number apparently listeners would just change the dial it was oh. almost like commercial so they would jump in and all of a sudden they're hearing what sound like news reports of aliens and stuff like that coming in and like <laughs> vaporizing people Without hearing, you know, oh, yeah. don't worry, this is a work of fiction. Yeah. yeah. And so they're all, f- people just freak right the hell out. Yeah. <laughs> Especially back then as well, when you just don't have, like, you know, the communication for you to actually, like, know yeah. what's going on around the world. And exactly, radio yeah. was the only source. Yep. There well, was, yeah, there was no Twitter. There was no, like, speed, speedy ways of communication. There's no news broadcast to chill out. TV and all yeah. that stuff. It was exactly. all, like... Everything was by radio. It was radio. all happening yep. then, potentially live. Oh, no, not even potentially. Like it was it happening was live. live. Exactly. Yeah, for sure, yeah. So. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, loads and loads of people went out, and, you know, like, people were trampled and all this kind of stuff. Were people, like, firing into the air blindly as well? Or? Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, no aliens were getting out. Yeah, it was crazy. Um, so, yeah, there's a quote from um, uh, one of the heads of uh, CBS News or whatever. And it said, uh, the following hours were a nightmare. This is after the broadcast was over, Mm -hmm. uh, because they had to cut it short. It said, the building was suddenly full of people in dark blue uniforms, which is cops. Mm -hmm. It said, hustled out of the studio, we were locked into a small back office on another floor. Here we sat, incommunicado, while network employees were busily collecting, destroying, or locking up all scripts and records of the broadcast. Finally, the press was let loose upon us, ravening for horror. How many deaths had we heard of, implying that that they knew of thousands? What did we know of the fatal stampede in Jersey Hall, implying it was one of many? What traffic deaths? The ditches must be choked with corpses. The suicides. Haven't you heard about the one on Riverside Drive? It was all vague in my memory and quite terrible. And uh, I said, the telephone switchboard, a vast sea of light, could handle only a fraction of the incoming calls. The haggard Wells sat alone and despondent. I'm through, he lamented. Washed up. I didn't bother to reply to this highly inaccurate self-appraisal. I was <laughs> too busy writing explanations to put on the air, reassuring the audience that it was safe. I also answered my share of incessant telephone calls, many of them from as far away as the Pacific Coast. Um, so yeah, it was uh, really, really huge. One of like to this day is one of the really things that a lot of people think of when someone says mass hysteria. Neat little uh, thing here. It says CBS News Chief Paul White wrote that he was convinced that the panic induced by the broadcast was a result of the public suspense generated before the Munich Pact. Mm. Uh, Radio listeners had their emotions played upon for days. Thus, they believed the Wells production, even though it specifically stated the whole thing was fiction. And within three weeks, newspapers had published at least 12,500 articles about the broadcast and its impact, although the story dropped off front pages after a few days. Orson Welles later said that Adolf Hitler cited the effect of the broadcast on the American public as evidence of the corrupt condition and decadent state of affairs in democracy. (laughs) So even Hitler fucking got a jab in on the Americans for that one. (laughs) Of course. So bad. Oh, Um, your decadence, America. Silly Americans. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yeah. I always like the War of the Worlds. I actually have a CD of it at home. Mm. You can listen to the original broadcast. Oh, nice. Oh, that's pretty sweet. Yeah. It's really cool. Yeah, it is pretty cool. I think there was... One three years ago, school in Japan about um, I forget which prefecture it was, but there was about like twenty six girls that had like a simultaneous seizure, like an episode. 
Ooh, I heard of this. Yeah. yeah really? Yeah. It was it. just like, at first it was just this one girl in her class, and then apparently she started like just having nephroplastic fit and just like having like stomach ache and all this stuff. It's just acting weird. And then as more people checked up on her, they started getting it yeah. as well. Whoa. That's creepy. Yeah. Huh. And then, of course, you know, people were saying that. And, of course, they had to shut down the school for a day after that because it's like, okay, this is fucked up. Mm. And of course, like, you know, the principal was like, I assure you all, this is actually just a normal case of just um, group hallucination and all this stuff and just and anxiety due to, yeah. due to exams and all this stuff. Hmm. And, of course, people outside are like, no, this might be like a mass possession. A mass possession. Yeah, it's the fucking <laughs> Oni, guys. It's the Oni. Some yokai are coming in. They're going to fuck shit up. <laughs> One of those little umbrellas with his tongue sticking out. Yeah, it's yeah. like a little naked body with a big fucking eyeball. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Guys with snake necks and shit. No dice. But actually, like a lot of, a lot of like mass hysteria, like especially the physical ailment with stuff, actually was really attributed to, well, not really attributed to, but like people always like you know blamed it on like oh it's a possession or something. Yeah, like that. Mm. yeah. The early cases yeah. people yeah. believed it was especially yeah. back then when you know. Yeah, yeah. Back then, early in you know, in the olden days, when people just when there's no medical signs or something like that, yeah. it's just all like, yeah. "Oh my god, he's possessed by the devil." Kind of want to bring back yeah, to the nuns. the nuns. Yeah, yeah, like, like, totally. Yeah, they yeah. would be the first to believe. Like, yeah. I accidentally demoned a bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I'm gonna laugh a bunch. <laughs> I remember reading or hearing about that a lot of the ones with like nuns and stuff back then was them kind of being able to get away with pushing the line and like saying like you know fighting that whole like repress your own desires and stuff yeah like oh i'm possessed that's why i'm masturbating you know <laughs> taking yeah. the edge off and all this yeah. kind of stuff it's like yeah. oh you just help me get the demon out mm-hmm. it was just a way of them kind of skirting the whole yeah. ridiculous or even when like a bunch of kids are yeah. you know, acting weird and all that stuff mm-hmm. they would shoot with them to like oh my god it's possessed or it's a witch yeah. You know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I know the witches. Witches and possessions were like yeah. a major. Oh, that was huge. Yeah. Yeah. Major yeah. thing. That was like the be... first to be blamed. Like, yeah. Exactly. This is the first excuse. Like, ah, uh, witch did it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which witch is which? <laughs> uh, Tim Curry was in the worst witch, but we'll save that for that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like a Halloween song, we turned into a bat. Yeah. <laughs> Well, there's also like you know the um, the penis panic. Is that the thing <laughs> I get? When... Oh no no no! Like there was, I think it was like during the nineties, a bunch of Chinese people they had like there was a mass hysteria of them scaring the, that their penis was shrinking. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, like there was like a scare of like of men just like being afraid that their you know penis will disappear and all that stuff. Then they would do stupid shit like hanging a string so that they won't go and all that stuff, and then they actually like hurt themselves in the end. Cause... Yeah, if you cut off enough. Blood flow. And, uh, yeah, like pretty much any party is gonna fall. Yeah, off, a lot of it. Like a lot of them did that because they were like, "Oh my god, oh my god!" Because apparently, my was god. it a massive case of if you don't no. use it, you lose it? No, it's more like at the time there's actually like the medicine. <laughs> I think because of the, at the time there's some Chinese people that's been taking too much of it. So then, you know, they okay. think... they Dried think, up turtles and stuff? No, they, it's, that thing is actually really happening. Like Advil. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Like real medicine. actually really it's happening the same with them. It's just their psychological state where they're just getting progressively more paranoid. Okay. Uh-huh. And then it okay. just became a case of like, oh my God, it might be happening to me. Oh my God. Oh my God. And then, you know. Wow. You yeah. start thinking that your dick gets smaller and then you start thinking you see it smaller. Or they might just be getting fat so they can't actually see it. Oh man, yeah, that was the worst. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, that's not that's not fun. You gotta lift the apron. It's like, oh, <laughs> the, the dummy apron. Oh, yeah. God, I'm so sorry, everyone. That's <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, but yeah, like that was like an actual hysteria, like in the '90s. So like, wow, it actually made news reports and all that. It was Whoa. really weird. Wow, gentlemen, your dicks won't shrink. Yeah, just stop like putting elastic bands around them and stuff. For God's sake. It's just turning more purple than usual. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> the pee-pee panic. <laughs> it, was, it was, like, it was just a weird time, but it was... Fucked up. Yeah, that is a weird time. It's very weird. I mean, it's just, like, it's just any kind of, like, mass hysteria is just, like, as long as you have people enough people blowing it out of proportion, you know? That's true. Mm-hmm.